see President's Day honoring our founding fathers who frequently put themselves at risk out there on the lines against our foes with another form of bloodshed in the form of Empires of Aether, the next great turn-based strategy game, a board game with the potential for a competitive scene. And we're just hoping that this first match of our first competitive season doesn't freaking lag. This tabletop's been prone to do that lately. And this match is featuring one of our finalists from the final tournament, or the last tournament, Dwarf Exterminator, a.k.a. Blue Shadow, who came up just short, almost snatched away the victory in the championship match of the first tournament. And he goes up against three fairly new players that have been very gung-ho to get as much experience as possible. You've got Oof Lord, who has already registered a couple of wins. One on blood. Wait. One on blood. I'll have to, I'll have to check. I think it was blood. Yeah. You've got Scooby, who has wins on water and lightning already in just a few matches played. And Rhythm Bell, who wants to become the next blood main. We are in the most up-to-date version of this game. We are featuring several new bosses today. And it's going to be a spicy one. I think we have three very fast-paced playing players. So this should be a hot one, ladies and gentlemen. And this match, while streamed live, will be posted to YouTube a little later tonight. And it looks like we got our first ban underway. Nature is getting taken out of here. Let's take a look at this board here and why that might be the case. You've got Forest. Not really clustered in any way, but you've got a couple corners that would certainly be very, very beneficial for nature. And so I definitely understand the nature ban. And it looks like metal and magma both banned as well. So we've got nature, metal, and magma getting banned away. Arcane still not usable. Arcane in an incredibly weak state here. And looking at the rest of the board, nothing is really standing out to me as incredibly strong. Except for down here in the lower left... I'm feeling a cheeky, cheeky, cheeky fire play. We get a good central volcano here touching a whole bunch of food. We can maybe even take that deciduous to Tropicus card. Oh, we've got blood as the first pick here. And the fourth ban was air. Lots of fields up here in this corner. That's going to be a very, very logical choice. Blood is going to be the first pick. And blood has been a very, very powerful force to be reckoned with. And so I think it is oof that is taking blood. We'll have to confirm that here momentarily. Fire's going up here in the top left in the northwest corner, and it's a good choice here, too. This is a great spot for a central volcano for secondary succession. I really like that grab, and that's going to be Rhythm Val, it appears, taking fire up in the northwest corner. And a very bold move by Dwarf Exterminator, the championship contender just last season, taking Glacier just after fire is selected, so a direct counter to their nation, picked Right, staring him in the face on the short side. I like this pick. Glacier's in a really, really solid position. And then we've got uh, Lightning being played down here in the southwest. Very nice. Very nice. There's some good solid bands here. Uh, Air, Metal, Magma, and what was it? Nature? Man, people are always afraid to let Nature in. And so now they're diving into their abilities. But let's assess the corners of the board. I think... All the corners are really, really balanced. The only one that is maybe perhaps a little bit weaker than others is going to be Glacier's Corner. They've got a desert and a star tile swamp. That's really unfortunate to see. It's going to be a more expensive swamp that you're going to have to purchase to get to the middle of the board, right? But I really, really like Fire's Corner. Once he gets this situated as a volcano, then every other food-producing tile that it's touching is going to produce twice as much food. And that is a very, very big deal when he goes into the mid-game and wants to pressure those boss tiles or pressure his opponent. And I think Fire, with Glacier on its shore side, not really afraid of blizzards in, in any way, I would imagine that Fire should probably pressure on this short side, killing Glacier, and then just turning around and going for Typhon. I think that's a very, very quick win for him. Maybe turn six, turn seven is a really good winning strategy for him. But who knows what Glacier is going to do? Glacier could wall fire off really, really early and just really demoralize fire and dissuade him from pursuing that. And then it's all on what is Blood going to do because Blood now has multiple viable strategies. Of course, they are general centric, but is he going to go with the very, very disruptive red shadow card? And it looks like, I'm not sure if this is his trash pile or he's keeping it. It looks like he's probably going to be trashing it. 
and see i really really hope that it gets used a couple times in these first few matches because it is such an interesting card and then lightning has a fairly cheap turn one not really good for them not much food being generated here uh so this might not be the best corner for lightning actually i think this is a fairly weak corner for them they want food as quick as they possibly can and turn one they're getting just food from the forest so that's unfortunate unless what he does is perhaps he's going to go to the mountain put a barracks here or on the desert barracks here and try to stretch the board just a little bit and go for this lake or this field uh but that field of course is a star tile so it's going to be a little more expensive so that's our corner matchup right now i'm really liking fire spot i think that's a really really solid pick and then kind of questioning uh dwarf's pick on glacier which he was either the third or the fourth pick in this game uh so very interesting there but glacier of course uh, a force we reckon with in the early game because they've got those cheapened soldiers but let's take a look at these new bosses on the board we've got elitus the centaur sitting at 50 hp as you defeat elitus you get to convert any two own tiles into any two non-landmark tiles that includes volcanoes blizzards perhaps any tile that your nation directly benefits from you can create and that's really really interesting is it not then we've got knock two of the owl and this stemmed from an idea that rhythm val actually gave me the other day as we were utilizing the library in the center of the board and the library allows you to buy abilities in tiers above where you're currently sitting and so he actually used it to purchase his quest early on and i love that idea so knock to the owl and yes we directly took that image from avatar the last airbender wan shi tong i believe the name is right spooky spirit of knowledge it gives you access to an ability one tier above where you're at and it's only sitting at 40 hp so what i think a lot of elements are going to be doing here is they're going to try to pursue it fairly early on pop that tier two in turns three or turn four kill it in the same turn and then they have access to a tier three ability very very early on and that can include their quest and when you have elements like fire in the game that have a very easy to accomplish quest in the game that's something to watch out for so maybe fire centers their early game around that and then the final boss that is new to this game is Oxybody the harpy upon killing this boss and she's sitting at 60 hp immediately advance to the next tier if you're sitting at tier one you are now tier two if you're sitting at tier two you are now tier three so very interesting to play around there although a little more health than the other two bosses on the board because it is a very very powerful ability sitting there but what is this this new landmark tile sitting in the middle of the board middle of the board the ancient cavern very interesting effect here because your units in it you may purchase it for five and five five food five building materials and you own it and only your units can enter it that means your opponent cannot attack it nor can they use their abilities on it and now it creates this sort of bunker for your units you can stockpile them and then move them in any which way and if you get to a point where you're just unstoppable really the opponents are just waiting on who what direction you commit to because it's probably going to be over for them the only downside to this tile is that you have to forfeit three food and three bm at the end of each turn so it has like a little rent cost to it so now let's take a look at these abilities here oh yes blood is taking the red shadow let's focus on blood as they are going i believe in the fourth turn position so they should be starting at 20 and 20 which is a really really big deal red shadow the general is going to start at the middle of the board that is so so huge right he can't move till turn three but he's got so many resources to play with in the early game his general is going to be at the middle of the board which is going to provide some really really tempo disruptive uh moves that blood could possibly do uh by starting in the middle of the board with their general on top of that they've got the sanguine blade which is going to bolster their strength okay so the fourth turn position or sorry first turn is going to be scooby here and scooby as the lightning player do people not have their sheets in i think they're putting in their sheets scooby as a lightning player let's take a look at their abilities lightning's got a very very standard tier one open the command thunderstorm to make sure that their weather is exactly where they need it to be when they press that aggression and then they've got that two tile movement with their general and thunderclap to supplement their building materials i think this would be one of the very few situations where you don't actually need thunderclap as the lightning player which is very interesting you've got two mountains a desert rainforest on your side of the board with another mountain in the middle do we even need thunderclap here and so this is why i think this is actually a very very weak corner for lightning but scooby has already earned himself a win on lightning and so perhaps he's feeling confident with it 
He really, uh, he has a pretty thought out strategy for them. And I think he's testing it out, testing the waters here. Uh, but the question is, can he move fast enough to capitalize on their early game? Because I'm not seeing the food production here in the early game for him to aggress upon someone like Blood, who really isn't strong in the early game. On top of that, Blood's general is going to be starting in the middle of the board, courtesy of that red shadow card, right? That red shadow card puts his strongest unit in the middle of the board, meaning he's not there to defend anything. So if I were Lightning, the most aggressive element in the game, no matter what I got cooking over here in the corner, I'm going at him. I'm going at him, and I'm hoping that the advantage cards parlay my way. All right, let's go ahead and throw these weather cards out there for them. So Lightning's opening up with a forest and a mountain, and the only reason why they're able to do that in the 10-10 turn position is because they don't have to actually put a barracks on their capital tile. That's one of their perks, is that they can train soldiers from their capital without actually constructing a barracks. So pretty solid open here. But once again, not that much food coming their way. He's going to be at six food at the start of next turn, which is kind of unfortunate. But let's see the advantage card that he drew. He drew one of the new ones. In our most up-to-date version, we've got some new advantage cards to play with. This card can be activated after losing a battle that included your general and an opponent's general. This is a really, really big deal against blood. And so I, I see this card, and I think it should once again echo, perhaps I should be pursuing the blood nation. Now, Glacier's got a really interesting turn one because their first two tiles purchased on turn one are going to be half price. He's got a very convenient Rainforest right next to him, a 6-6 six, six tile that he's going to be able to purchase for 3-3, three, three, and I really hope that he remembers to capitalize on that. And even this move right here, moving the general to the mountain and putting a barracks on the mountain tile is a significant deal. This barracks is increasing his middle ground standing on the board. Very, very big deal here. Yeah, I like it. I really, really like it. But still, he purchased a mountain and a rainforest, and his resources are still sitting very pretty. Taking a look at Glacier's abilities, uh, in, in light of the recent changes with Glacier, they have a fairly standard ability set here. This is really the only flex spot, Snowshoes. There's another Tier 2 card that they might be taking, um, but Snowshoes is always, always solid to get that movement passive on him. But they've got a really, really solid strategy where their soldiers are cheaper, so they can be aggressive. But more importantly, they can blizzard off the highly contentious star tiles. And if I'm going against Blood over here, if I'm able to get to this mountain and I blizzard it off, Blood has no typical way of melting that blizzard, nor does Lightning. And so I'm feeling really, really confident moving in that direction. The only weak spot to this strategy is what is Fire going to be doing over here on my weak side, my short side? Because Fire can directly counter me. And yes, let's see why that is. Fire has a tier 2 ability that can melt the snow of two blizzards. That is a massive deal. The strongest aspect of the Glacier Kit absolutely devastated by the Fire Nation. Fire already purchasing that mountain and getting that centralized volcano. Like we said, this is what his uh, middle, his, I would say, turn 3, turn 4 game is going to be. Go tier 3, pop secondary succession, and now all of these food tiles that he owns are going to produce twice as much food. That is a massive deal. And so not even considering resource buildings on him, that's going to be 4, 8, 12, 16 food from these four tiles alone. And he can put resource buildings on top of that. So he is going to have plenty of food to aggress upon whatever opponent or boss that he feels he should uh, in order to win this game. And so then we've got Blood, whose strategy is, you know, the most predictable in the game, right? General is your strategy. The general is going to be starting in the middle of the board. So what is he going to do after that? He's already got a buffed general. His general is sitting at plus 10 to his dice roll instead of a plus 5. So his general is rolling between an 11 and 16 already in the beginning of the game. And on top of that, every unit that the general kills is making his general even stronger. So, very significant. I wonder what Oof Lord is thinking here by taking this red shadow. I really, really love it. It is very much an experimental card, but disrupts the tempo of every other player at the table which is why I love it the most. All right, and we're going. Let's see what Fire's advantage card was as well. We've got a good defense of a star tile. Not sure Fire is going to be in the defending seat this game, but who knows? I think Blood is the curveball here. Where normally they are the opposite corners from one another and Blood wouldn't be able to aggress upon him, this Red Shadow, turn three, he can get to this forest or this desert, make a little stronghold, and then it's just... 
Blood Sheryl is always in his face. Because now, in addition to all these other changes, Blood has a tier 2 passive that allows their general to teleport from one castle to another. They can't move after that, but that allows the general to where if he ever loses a battle, to get right back out there into the fray, as that is the, the cornerstone of your strategy. And Fire is getting a Volcano and a Mountain, already adding 3 to their dice roll in turn 1. So a really, really big offensive presence here. And just purchasing a couple of soldiers in addition to that. Glacier's Advantage card, by the way, was the Elven Reinforcements. Which, if we're looking over here, the only time that's going to be relevant is if he makes it to this forest. So he's probably not looking to prioritize utilizing this card. And is maybe hoping to just bait an opponent into using something else on it to maybe get rid of it. Uh... Or maybe prevent an opponent from attacking him. He could, you know, coax him into a direction where thinking that this is a more, a, a bigger threat of a card than it actually is. But I really, really like Glacier's positioning here. That barracks on the mountain is a really, really big deal because that allowed him to get a tile two tiles away in turn one. Which I think we're seeing a, more and more players doing this, actually. More and more players are putting the barracks on the first tile that they purchase and expanding from there. Glacier is certainly going to prioritize more food than building materials because they can produce more soldiers at a cheaper rate. So over time, they're going to typically have way more soldiers than their opponent. But also the fact that Glacier didn't move to the lake, which, you know, kind of puts him more at a central position and he moved towards his field. I do anticipate Blue Shadow to actually move in Blood's direction and aggress upon him, even though it's the long side of the board. If he gets a hold of this mountain, I think Blood is in a really, really tricky position. Even though Blood has a great middle ground position on the board, courtesy of this General in the Red Shadow ability, I think he's going to find himself very much uh, cornered if Glacier actually puts the pressure here. And he's going to be at the mercy of fire dictating what they're going to do. And the first weather event of the day is Avalanche. So slowing down the tempo of the game, Glacier loves this. Right? I think everyone purchased a mountain on turn one. Yeah. So this is hitting every single player. Mountains lose entire building material production for two turns. That is a very, very big deal in this early game. And I think the one who benefits the most from this is going to end up being Glacier. Lightning is absolutely devastated by this because that's what a, the majority of their turn one was committed to was building materials. And now they're not getting it. Uh, fire misses... A little bit of this ability. Love this new general that he selected. Very, very cool there. Got some new custom general pieces over here on this side of the board. Uh, so a really, really cool addition that we've got here in this latest version of the game. Um, but fire, because this is a volcano, this is not going to get cut off in its building material production. So very, very solid there. Yeah, lightning's economy is just really, really weak. Four and five. He's only going to be netting uh, four building materials this turn because that mountain is gone. Going ahead and extending towards that lake, getting that food, branching out. We're going to want to see this general move towards the rainforest, but he couldn't afford it. Maybe he should have actually prioritized buying that instead of the lake. I probably would have gone for the rainforest, especially because I'm missing out on the mountain's building material production. But what I should see now with two resource buildings available to him, perhaps a double resource building on the lake and the forest in order to bolster that food production. That's probably what I want to see. Now, Scooby is a very, very thought-out player here. Didn't actually draw his advantage card, though. Go ahead and single him there. See if he needs to draw that. Didn't pick up on the signal here. Oh, there he goes. Let's see what his advantage card is. Gets a really solid one. I like this. So we've got the Sand People Desert card. Allowing you to train soldiers at an incredibly discounted rate. And look at this. To buy this desert get three soldiers out there for a total of three food something that lightning desperately wants to do i want to see lightning aggress upon the blood nation here i think he probably wants to try to stress noctua here to maybe get a tier three ability maybe get this thunderstruck ability i think that's a really powerful play haven't seen that done yet and so he does opt for buying the resource building on the lake which is going to put him to one and three what else did he do he put one on the forest as well so, I would imagine both of these are for food in order to bolster that food production. And then next turn, we might see he won't be able to afford the rainforest, but his general can move to the desert. He could purchase that and then get three soldiers out of it utilizing that advantage card. That should be a really, really solid turn three because then those three soldiers can progress down this coastline. And I really think Lightning, even if they're not intending to attack, 
can put pressure on blood and maybe force them to make a mistake somewhere along the lines. I think what blood should opt to do here, they can't move their general uh, this turn. They can move them next turn. So what I think blood should try to do is if they can try to get to the point where whatever tile their general buys in the third turn is the sixth tile. Because courtesy of their passive, every third tile gets them a free castle. And if Blood has decided that someone is going to be a weak opponent, and based on all this, I would think Lightning is probably going to be the weakest, unfortunately, for Lightning. Um, I, would, I would imagine Blood is probably trying to go for this forest tile, is what I'm probably thinking. Probably thinking. I, I, I think so. And so if we're looking at this turn two... He's got 11 and 11. He's got plenty of resources. He's gonna The next tile he buys is going to force a castle upon it. Probably going to want that to be the Rainforest or perhaps the Star Tile. Either way, we can get to both of them. Um, but he's sitting at a point where he can only afford the Rainforest and the Lake or the Rainforest and the Mountain. So he's only going to be at four tiles owned. So he is going to struggle to get to that fifth tile point uh, in order to own this and put a free castle on it he might have the building materials necessary to put one on there not sure not looking that far ahead let's see uh ice's or glaciers advantage card pretty solid here i think they're gonna need this this is a bonus to when they are defending and i think fire is probably going to go in their direction whether they actually intend to attack them at their home or just position for the bosses not sure uh, Rhythm is a very, very big boss tile player, and he's already moving his general, wow, down the long side. This is kind of unexpected. I would expect his generals to be moving to the middle of the board to position against either opponent, whichever way they're committing. Uh, but he's going ahead and already getting this field. He already owns both of them. Very, very solid. Really good on the food production. Glacier holding on to that tier one blizzard ability and just putting a unit on this rainforest. I like this positioning. So he went ahead, moved his general to the lake, purchased the lake and the desert, and just moved the soldier to the rainforest. He's definitely going to buy this next turn and likely is going to blizzard it. Unless Blood, for whatever reason, inexplicably, doesn't put a soldier on this mountain because he would just easily want to blizzard that and just choke and suffocate Blood out of it. So Rhythm Val taking a really quick turn, getting that field, putting a resource building it already. Oh, resource building on both of them. I like this. Let's take a look at his food production. Hasn't updated it just yet, but he is going to be at nine food produce already going into turn three. Really solid. So he'll be at tier two positioning in terms of food, but he can't quite get there because of BM because of the weather event. And that is going to be significant. Fire wants to pop tier two in that turn three position, turn four position. It looks like he's going to have to wait for turn four. Blood taking their turn two. The Rainforest is going to be the third tile purchase, so he is going to get a free castle on that one, which is always solid, right? Great tile, putting a resource building on it, but here, he's got to put it... This is bad. This is bad. He's moving down the coast. Instead of moving a unit into the mountain, I think we're going to see Blood get choked out here by Glacier. This is a very significant play already in turn two. It's looking like Blood wants to prioritize this forest for his Ultra tile in tier two. That is going to be bad news for him because I'm thinking this is going to be a blizzard on his doorstep, which means he could lose the, he could lose the altar tile at any point. Oh, that's rough. Let's see what blood's advantage card is though. Destroy an enemy defensive fortification. That does not eliminate blizzard tiles. That's not a very good combination for him. So I think Oof has made a detrimental mistake here. Let's see if blue shadow is perhaps wanting to put the pressure on him. Maybe he doesn't want to. Maybe he doesn't want to. We shall soon see. Blizzard dub. Uh, yeah, this, that was a really, really, really big play that Blood failed to see. I'm thinking Blizzard is going to, yep, he's got enough for it. He just needs to buy this Star Tile, make into a Blizzard, and then what does Blood do? I don't think they can do anything. No one is likely to pop Tier 2 this turn because of the Avalanche ability. What's up, Exit, by the way? What's up? Oh, and we've got the Blood Moon. So blood units have plus one on their dice. Well, for the next two turns, that's solid. But the problem is they're going to be suffocated in this turn. It's not about blood wanting to aggress. The general can finally move this turn. And so, 
We'll finally get to see what the pathway is for Oof with his Blood General, courtesy of the Red Shadow. But I, I just, I think we've seen a mistake already in turn two. It's a really, really big deal. Lightning draws the gain intel advantage card, allowing him to look at the advantage cards of a nation, but no real reason to activate that right now. But he's doing exactly what we said he would, moving that general to the desert because he couldn't afford the rainforest, and he's able to spawn three soldiers there for a total of three food. And he's spreading them out. This is interesting. Not sure if I do this right on the back, the back end of learning that blood is buffed up here. But that being said, I think we're going to see blood is not going to be able to prioritize this direction because I'm thinking Glacier is about to suffocate him. And I'm really hoping he does because this is going to be a really, really experienced type play. Oof has a lot of games under his belt in a short amount of time, but how many competent players has he played against? He's played against a bunch of people who have been learning the game with him. And Blue Shadow, out of all the players who have played this game, might have the most experience out of all of them. And he's a big fan of New Glacier. And I think we're about to see him absolutely cut him off. So Lightning really, really stalled in the economy, though. That's really rough because... Ugh... That avalanche very much hurt them, but their corner is just not good for lightning. It's just not. Like we said in the beginning, it is a weak corner for them. We might even see fire aggress upon lightning right here. I think that's a solid play, too. Lightning's economy is garbage. You take away that lake, they're going to be at net five food. What do they do? Nothing. I think we see fire battle cry into this lake. Well, how much food is he at? He's at 12 and 5. The perfect amount of food for an army. I would eliminate this resource building. Put a barracks down. Develop an army and go into the lake. Oof is playing blood. Jake is. Rhythm Val trash. Let's see. I think Rhythm and Blue Shadow are very, very powerful players. Oh, please. Come on. You got to do this play. You got to do this play. You got to see it. First of all, draw your advantage card, right? Did he get an announce card? He did. He got the announce card possibility of two soldiers at his capital doesn't look like he got it though so i think he lost yeah i think fire and glacier in the strongest position but blue shadow has to see this play he's not doing it i think he still has enough i don't i think this is updated no 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 oh what's going on it wasn't updated i guess 6-3. Is he going to go ahead and turn this into a blizzard? He prioritized the elven reinforcements, I think, with this play. Oh, my. He retreated. What, why are you retreating on the board in the opening turns? I, it's such a perplexing play. Had a quick disconnect right there. Hopefully, Scooby is able to join back here. Oh my gosh! I think if you do this play, you you win the game. I ah! Yikes! Hey, you'll notice that the game isn't lagging yet. We just turned the graphics on this game to medium, which didn't change anything of its aesthetic, and yet streaming like a beauty. Let's see fires cards here. Fire's got the meme force hospitality card and the setting an example card. Oh my what I think fire should do though is I think they should do that aggressive play that I was that I was mentioning. 12 food. I think fire goes in. I think they should. Graphics in a tabletop game. I know, never heard of it before, right? Never heard of it before. It's a super aggressive play, and I don't think Rhythm Val plays that way, but that is the play I'm doing every time. Instead, he's opting to go down the short side, go against the nation that he counters, which can't blame him for that. We said this is his opening strategy, or in the early game, we said that this is something he should prioritize doing. Ooh, and he's taking a really conservative defensive fortification here. I think this might end up biting him. You're in a position where people can easily go tier two next turn. So if he just decides to blizzard this lake, pop polar bears, he's coming at you with two armies. Do you have the economy to withstand that? Sitting at 5 and 0, though, this avalanche is really, really hurting him. I think Blue Shadow has multiple options here, but I think it was a very much a missed opportunity not converting this into a Blizzard tile. I mean, how, how often 
do you get the chance to blizzard a star tile that is away from you in a corner that is not yours all right and it's going to blood turn three their general is finally allowed to move courtesy of the red shadow card the general has not been able to move but he started in the middle of the board so let's see going into the ancient cavern which is the new landmark tile very cool playing the vessel of avarice the pun the play on the jar of greed from the Yu-Gi-Oh, drawing three advantage cards that is a massive advantage card let's see what he gets here he's going to be forced to play one right now excellent advantage card right here the just say no allowing him to negate any advantage card that is used against him Ooh, this is really solid with your general spawning in the middle of the board this is really really good i think what he should probably do is I would get rid of Force Gifting and or Dwarven Alliance. I don't see you using that anytime soon, unless you're using it to spawn your soldiers. Uh, does Glacier have their quest? They do not. He goes for a more aggressive play on Glacier, typically. And I do like it for the situation. I think he would find it difficult playing against Fire to actually get his six Blizzard tiles. So I think that's the right move, not taking the Blizzard. But I really like Oof staying on the Landmark tile. Very much in position to fight someone pretty shortly but where is he going after that because fire can melt it yes they can they have a tier two ability that can melt two blizzards so blood opts to di or maybe use the force gifting yeah might as well use it what did he get from this didn't actually get anything for it or maybe he's deciding who to use it on Man, I... Oh, gosh. I'm pretty sure we could have seen, like, a turn three setup for a win. Kind of upset we didn't see it. It goes to show, though. Lots of experience, and there's still so many different ways to play this game. So let's see where Blue Shadow goes from here. Could have been an absolutely massive territory grab, though. Not only a star tile, but in enemy territory. So he's using Force Gifting. Don't think he actually plucked a card from anyone, though. No card's been given to him yet. We're waiting on it. Perhaps he's taking his sweet time and picking who it's going to be used on. We know that the Oof Lord takes his sweet time on some casual decisions at times, right? We've all seen it done. We've all seen it done. But hey, who can blame him? I think he almost lost his life last turn. I think he's very lucky. Because Glacier could have purchased it, put a barracks on it, blizzarded it, and then advanced into the field. I, I, I'm i kind of baffled he didn't do it. I really am. Maybe it's because of this weather event. He's afraid of it. But if it's a blizzard, it's a blizzard. You can't be touched. All right, we're going into turn four. The game is moving pretty quickly. I think the game was shaping up to move... Uh, real quickly just a second ago but now we go to lightning who's sitting at gonna be sitting at 16 and 7 pretty healthy still not tier twoable i think lightning maybe they're gonna grab this rainforest this turn right they have to grab this rainforest but then you hmm you want to you want to move into this field but the problem is you can't afford both the rainforest and the field and the problem with that is if you just put soldiers on the field, that's Blood's general. That's not just any general. That's Blood's general. Therefore, anytime Blood kills any of your units, he gets stronger. We don't want to be responsible for that in the early game. Mountain getting a resource building put on. I think that's a solid move. Doesn't have enough for the Rainforest. Doesn't have enough for the field either. I think this is a little bit of mismanagement of resources because now what's the play? Where do we go here now? Because I think blood is blood's probably going right here this turn. 1915. He's popping tier two. He's going there. He's doing it for sure. Now that Glacier gave him some breathing room. He's going to make this forest into an altar tile. He's going to sacrifice some dudes. The impressive yield advantage card utilized by Scooby drawn this turn. So he's got a tile that's going to produce double resources. What's he going to opt for? Probably the lake. Give him some double food. 
be a real shame if Fire just battle cried and stole it from him, though. I mean, that has to be the title that he used it on, right? Gosh! Ah! Uh, I'm seeing a lot of openings. If I'm playing this game, yo, I'm carving up multiple opponents. Carving them up! I'm seeing multiple openings. So we are, this is game one of season one of Empires of Aether, the first true competitive setting where we are tracking every detail of this game with every match played. What elements are banned? What elements are winning? How are they winning? We are finally going to get the balancing done on this game. I think we are extremely close. And then we are ready to disclose it to the masses. The world will be ready for it then. That's going to be a big deal. I'm excited for it. It's coming fast. It is coming fast. Yeah, Lightning not doing anything, actually. Ooh, didn't even move units. I don't like this at all. That was just a wasted turn. What's he planning? Absolutely a wasted turn here. Yeah, I think he's about to get... If Fire is smart, they pounce on... He's going to have a lot of food, so he can make you know a lot of soldiers next turn. But I don't know. That's a wasted turn. I think blood's coming at you. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Blood's going to buy this tile and it gets a free castle put upon it. I think that's what Blood's play is this turn. Glacier getting an absolute juicer of an advantage card. Teleporting to any boss tile on the board. Let's see what he might want to do. Going ahead and turning this field into a blizzard tile. Turning this lake into a... So he's he went tier two. And he popped both of his abilities. Look at this. Okay, I like this setup. This is a good setup. A great network of blizzards. Great stuff there. Popping both his tier 1 and his tier 2 abilities. The tier 1 allowing him to turn one tile into a blizzard. The tier 2 allowing him to turn two tiles into a blizzard. Very solid there. And he goes ahead and pops polar bears. But where are they going? Oh my. What's he, what's going on here? Why is he, what's going on here? He plays, puts the advantage card out there, but that's not the, okay. So I think he combined all of his other soldiers that were over here into an army. And because of snowshoes, he's going to be able to attack. And I think he read that this card was attacking. Not the case. That is definitely defending. So he does not want to attack this just yet. This is set against 60 HP. If he rolls a 1 or a 2, it's a loss. Rolls a 6, though. Wow, he rolled the dice on it. Glacier is now tier 3 in turn 4. He went for it. Now that is some cojones on that play. Blue Shadow advancing to tier 3. And he's got the bull by the horns. He's got a win condition waiting for him in the next turn. Oh my gosh. But imagine if the blizzard is here. Why not? I still think it should be there. What does blood do? They can't do anything. Oh man. Glacier is now confidently in the driver's seat. What is fire going to do? Sitting at 17 and 7, still can't go tier 2. So he can't melt this blizzard here. Nor does he even want that fight. But the problem is, Glacier's going to be able to teleport to Noctua in the next turn. Take it. He could go anywhere he wants. Because this is not going to just be three armies. It's probably going to be four, maybe five next turn. Let's see, he's at five food. Netting 15, he can... Train an army here, train an army here, move everything into Oxivity, teleport to Noctua. He'll have five armies there. Then you know what he does? He just gathers food, trains two armies every turn, gets to ten armies in three turns, and he wins. I think this game's wrapped up. Really. I think Fire is forced into a position where they have to attack this right now. But the problem is, is he can't go to Tier 2. He's training an army, which adding plus three to his dice roll. Oh, wow. Okay. 
He's not going for Noctua. Doesn't want to do it because he's only tier 1. I figured he was going to be going... Okay, is he battle crying or is he just advancing? It appears he's just advancing. Ooh, but this is... No, this is dangerous. Oh, he's feeding blood. What is he doing? He's feeding blood. If he sits right here and he doesn't attack lightning, blood is going to go tier 2, exsanguinate this army, and then take the army, uh, the general and the two soldiers, and then blood will have plus 12 soldiers sacrificed? That would be a 34 plus dice roll when he's attacking already? Holy moly, what is fire doing? I don't think he drew an advantage card. He didn't. Oh, man. Yeah, I think this is... Is he going to attack Blood's General here? He's either going Noctua, Lightning, or Blood. He's got three options here, but I don't really like any of them. Probably going at Lightning is the play. I, I'm getting kind of confused by some of these plays here, boys. Who's playing what and how's it looking? We've got blunders all over. Blunders. Well, it worked out heavily for Blue Shadow. I would say in the driver's seat, we're looking at three turns away from Glacier winning, and I don't see how other elements stop him unless a friendly dragon is drawn. Glacier's about to have a win condition next turn easily, easily, easily. They took a very, very risky play and rolled against Occipity turn four after popping Polar Bears. Rolled a six. Now Glacier is tier three. So, and then what he has is he's got Bull by the Horns. So I think he's going to teleport across the board over here to Noctua, take it out. He's got two bosses, and then he also just floats three armies a turn, and he can be at ten armies in just a couple turns. That's what I think the play is. Lightning effectively didn't have a turn here. I think Blood was very lucky because this tile right here should be a blizzard. It very much worked out for Glacier. But now look at the border that Blue Shadow has set up here. Like, no one wants to go at this now. No one wants to go at this. Does he know about the tar 10 army? Yes, he does. Blue Shadow has more experience than anyone. He's played the most games. He's a good player. And he really likes glaciers. He, he definitely knows it. Uh, but yeah, we've got Scooby on Lightning. Don't like his turn. He basically didn't do anything. Fired it. Oh, fire just fed. Now we've got Rhythm over here making a massive blunder. Massive blunder. Blood is just going to absolutely feed on his opponent. What is taking so long with this turn, though? What is taking so long? He's got the setting sail card. That's pretty huge. If he could melt this blizzard. But yeah, fire is not in a position to actually go tier 2. Absolutely devastating. Blood sitting at 5 advantage cards. Has to play something right now. Probably going to want to do reinforcements, I would imagine. Because blood is about to pop tier 2. Exsanguinate this army. And then kill fire's general and two soldiers. Dylan has absolutely fed blood here. Absolutely. Sitting at 21 and 16, he's going to pop tier 2. Wow. Yeah, so I, I don't see how Lightning gets into this game. Oh, what's going on here? Do we draw the announce card? No? So why is this why is this weather event being drawn here? What's going on? What is this? What's going on? Holy crap, didn't realize it's turn four and Shadow is tier three. Yeah, that was a massive play. Because it was not... Okay, so Blood is buying the new landmark tile. Ancient Cavern, which does force him to pay three and three each turn. It has a little rent, but this is a bunker. It is impenetrable by the opponent. As long as he owns it, no one can use their effects on it. No one can attack it. But I think there's a very obvious play here. Blood did go tier two. That's why his resources are so low. 
Yeah, what is going on? Why are those weather events underneath? I think they didn't understand what was going on there. He's transfusing. What's he sending in here? Perhaps all of his food for BM so he can put an extra castle down somewhere? Yo. <laughs> Getting message right now. This guy is yikes. <laughs> yikes! Okay, so I... And then I think this is a blunder by... So Blood blundered in turn two. Glacier didn't take advantage of it. But I think this is a massive blunder as well. Going ahead and spawning Dwarven Alliance on his mountain over here. Wait a minute. He bat formed... How did he bat form though? Okay, so Blood is going to counter Glacier here. But how did he bat form his soldiers? Did he sacrifice enough? I haven't seen him sacrifice any. So how did his general get over here? Anyways, the Blood General bat formed over here to the forest and exsanguinated one of Glacier's armies. But... I'm not... This is a, a this is yet again another blunder. Ooh, I, I don't like these plays at all. I don't even know what to say. Like I, I think now without a doubt, unless there's some really fortunate advantage cards drawn, I don't see how Blue Shadow loses this. I think we're looking at a turn seven victory. If I'm doing my math right. Could even be earlier than that. If he just somehow gets three star tiles. Then he just wins, right? Or if he goes for Typhon. He's going to teleport his soldiers here this turn because he can train two armies. He'll train two armies via snowshoes. He can get to Oxybity with both of them. Teleports to Noctua. Then he's on this side of the board as well. And he can just aggress upon lightning. Because what do they do? I think... Yeah, so Oof transferred all of his few, uh, all of his food. He transfused all of his food for BM to put a castle on this forest, thinking that Justin is going to attack him here. Obviously, he doesn't know what advantage card Justin is holding. I don't think Justin has any intention on attacking Blood any further. Absolutely not. So I think Oof is doing this to defend himself, but also I don't think he actually should have been able to do what he just did. I think that's a bit of an issue. So we've got a bogus, two bogus weather cards in a row. Let's see the real one. And a good one, one of the new ones. Merry Aethermas. Each player chooses to either receive 10 food or 10 building materials. Very solid. Very solid. Going to help our fire friend get to tier 2 and really become relevant in this game. Because right now I don't think he has much ground to stand on. But he should be breathing a sigh of relief. An absolute sigh of relief. Ooh. Has the Keep Your Friends Closer card come into play? It is not yet. Let's let's look into the future. Let's see if it's coming into play this game. Not looking like it, because I really I think we only have three turns left. And it's nowhere near. Here it is. It is the fifteenth card down. We're not making it that far. Not a chance. It'd be nice though. It'd be cool. It would be very, very cool. Look at Lightning's turns, but, like, what do we do? So he's going Tier 2, obviously. But now what? I just, I don't like any of these plays. He's getting his two barracks. He's going for the Blitzkrieg play. I guess he's going for Noctua? Or is he advancing upon fire? Gosh, I, I just, I, I cannot believe... Looking back on this game, and, and I hope the players in this game go back and look at the footage, because I know there's a lot of people who are playing this game now who really want to study it and learn, like, where did they go wrong? Was it something they could have prevented? And I think all three players that aren't named Blue Shadow, and even Blue Shadow's made a mistake, I think, 
But all three players have just made bad blunders where they just did not capitalize. And it's not me looking at advantage cards and saying like, oh, am I weighing these options? Am I, going? I think if you're playing around advantage cards, you're losing the game already. I can't play for a 3 out of 120 shot that they've got a card that will stop me. So Lightning is going to pop their massive play. Command Thunderstorm is now going to play for this turn and the next. And he's going to go for Noctua. So he's got a guaranteed dice roll here of 50. Noctua is at 40 HP, so that's going to be an automatic take. Which allows him to access a Tier 3 ability. I imagine he goes for Thunderstruck. I imagine. Because he's actually not making that much resources. The only reason he had so much to begin with is because he basically didn't do anything last turn. He basically just ended his turn. So what ability did he take? He was hovering over Cumulonimbus. But I imagine you'd probably take Thunderstruck. I'm not sure what you do with it. Just cruise down the coastline probably. He's got Lightning Rod. So he can bring these units with him to his general. And they can just cruise down the coast. I, that's what you should do. Next turn, buy this mountain, move your general into it. Thunderstruck, Lightning Rod, get four armies on the coastline. What does Blood do? Because they're going to see this turn that this over here is insignificant. Glacier's not sticking around here for long. But now that Noctua's gone, this has 60 HP. Elidus does. If Blue Shadow gets two armies... And a soldier, that is a guaranteed kill on Elitus. There are no take backsies. They're asking, can we do take backs? No take backs. Absolutely not. Yeah, so we've got some, some struggling plays here. People are not on their A game tonight. This is how we open up season one. This is the season opener. Hey, but at least the game isn't lagging tonight. Isn't that a treat? I'm hoping to have matches several nights a week, getting as many people involved as would like. Should be a really, really good time. No lag is very nice. Oh, yeah, it's smooth. Smooth as butter. I just turned the graphics from ultra to medium. Boom. Boom. Scooby has now announced that he is tilted. But, like, I'm not really sure what your play is anyway. I think their turn two, turn three, they took themselves out of the game. We're only in turn five, by the way. The game is moving pretty quickly, though. They've only been going for 45 minutes. I think this game is going to be an hour, hour-long game. Unless opponents just stall the inevitable. Which we know players at this table... Are prone to doing that. Oof in particular. But I think Oof has already made just three blunders this game. Well, I, I don't understand the purpose of buying this. I don't. He should have absolutely just feasted upon fire. Absolutely should have feasted upon fire. Became relevant. And then he, he can play. He's flexible. But, like, otherwise, why did, why did you use Red Shadow? He put his general in the middle of the board to buy... It's just... It's strange. So, we've got the X communication card. Very powerful. Although, I don't see Justin actually needing this card. So, he trained an army at this barracks. Moved it into the blizzard. It looks like he definitely wants to challenge... He wants to challenge the boss this turn. But he could do something else. Who knows? I think he should probably... Okay. Advancing into Fire's territory. This is bold. Very, very bold here. Gonna go ahead. Oh, he's utilizing his general's passive. He's tier 3, remember? Any tile claimed by the general can be turned into a blizzard. Oh, my gosh. And if he had his quest this game, he's two tiles away. His general could just mosey on around via snowshoes. Just taking tiles left and right. They, they wouldn't be able to stop it. Like, this game is over. The game is over. Fire can melt a couple, but it doesn't matter because Glacier has the plays. I think what they probably... 
And he's going ahead and winter storming on the move here. Tossing this forest blizzard into lightning's territory. What's... And he's blizzarding blood. Holy moly! So what he's doing with this... I think he's guaranteeing this boss tile. I think he's saying I don't want anyone to go near it. So he utilizes his tier 3 ability. Winter Storm on the move. Chucks Blizzard's three tiles away. And yep, he's teleporting to it right now. This is not a guarantee for him though. If he rolls a 1, this is very unfortunate. But he's feeling hot tonight. He's already rolled a 6. As his lone dice roll of the evening. But Justin is activating the Bull by the Horns advantage card. Teleporting him to a boss tile. Did he just roll? He just rolled a one. That's a one there, folks. Why did he do that? He had resources. Train another army. Hey, barracks and an army. Barracks and army was a guarantee! Actually, a one would have been a tie. Then I wonder, what happens? If you tie on the boss after teleporting, what do you do? We got a nice juicy L for him. Oh, that's a wasted. Oh, that... Yo, I, I think he doesn't realize how, how much in the driver's seat he actually is. It's redeem command. It's redeem, then insert the word you're going for. Okay, so now we got Fire who's sitting at... Sitting at five advantage cards. Got to use one right now. He's got that Force Hospitality. Is he wanting to actually use this against Lightning? This Rainforce is actually unclaimed. So Glacier wants to get his General over here. He's still going to end up getting this Blizzard tile, I think. Give Frank to make yourself drink. I, I wondered if that was the agenda. Fire's battle crying here. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Fire... Oh, he threw away setting sail, so he's not using setting sail. Fire's battle crying. Is he going two tiles, but to what? They must attack this turn. Come on, Rhythm. What's the play? Can't attack the cavern. That's the entire... So he's melting blizzards. He's defrosting them. What is the real purpose of this, though? Yo, I can't believe Blue Shadow just... He just made this game from being 10 minutes longer to probably 30 minutes longer. Yikes! Why did he do that? Blunders all over the map. So he melts the two blizzards on his borders. We knew that was coming, right? That's why Glacier didn't take their quest. He did activate Battlecry, but where's it going? Is he Battlecrying here? That's such a waste. So he's got secondary succession here. So now Fire's going to be making a lot of food. This is four food from this field, eight food from this field. Hasn't even purchased the rainforest in the lake yet, so he will eventually be making a lot of food once he gets those two tiles owned. But wow, what is he battle crying? The general? Like, what is the point of moving this far into the middle of the board just to go backwards again? Which is exactly what Blood did by starting in the middle of the board and then teleporting back. Why? The middle of the board is the place to be. That is how you win the game. Blue actually troll absolutely. Absolutely did. For sure did. Da -na -na. Nutty play. Nutty plays all over. But man, rolling a one, that's that's kind of stuff that I do, man. It was a five out of six shot though. If you rolled a two, he does kill it. Actually, no, he ties. So two ties there. He, but he had the resources. That's what I don't understand. Is you had the resources. Why? 
Oh, goodness gracious me, oh my. But, I mean, I would have probably taken a chance, like, rolling a one, come on the way he rolls a one. Yeah, I feel that, too. If it's a five out of six to get a win condition, I'm doing that as well. For sure. No, I don't blame him at all. But he could have made it a five out of six where he doesn't lose the units if he just trains that extra army. And then you're also closer to your second win condition because you're getting an extra army. Like, it's a no-brainer. Big troll. So fire does end up battle crying towards lightning. Ooh. This is interesting. But actually, lightning has the counterplay. He doesn't even know it. He's just going to lightning rod these armies here. I assume he has Thunderstruck because of Noctua. And he's going to go two, four armies at him. Was it the boss or a person? He was attacking a boss. He's attacking this boss, which would have given him his first win condition. But what I think he can do here is I think he can actually... Oh, no. Ah. Interesting. It's confusing, man. So, Blood hasn't drawn their card yet, I don't believe. Unless they got an announced card. Yep, Force a Nation to throw away one of their advantage cards. Told Glacier to throw away one of their advantage. So, this is a classic. Uh, we've got multiple people going against Glacier right now. Yeah, he should not be able to do this. That's what I, I don't... Like, are people not watching this? Didn't read the card. I'm sorry, what is he doing wrong? I, I just... So, Rhythm just made a play that he's over now. Like, he'll be irrelevant now. I mean, both of them will be. Scooby and, and him will be irrelevant. No, wait, this is actually... Why are you attacking Lightning when Command Thunderstorm is up? Understand. Wait, what's going on here? What's going on here? Wait, are they giving him the boss because Oof cheated earlier? Or didn't cheat, didn't know it. Wait a minute. What's going on here? What did someone do wrong? Oh, his bat form passive, he can only do once you have 10 soldiers sacrificed. His general was over here two turns ago, and he teleported over here and used his exsanguinate on Glacier. And he was actually at zero soldier sacrifice at the time. So he didn't read his card. Are they giving him this? I think this is a little bit of a capitulation due to not reading our card. But I'm not sure if giving Glacier the win condition is right. They're trying to rewind heavily is what they're doing right now. I think fix everything. I mean, I don't know if you fix everything. Okay, whatever, that works. Wait, so because you read the bathroom card there, giving Glacier the boss? Well, he would have the boss because he actually would have two armies. He would have two armies more than he had before. So he'd be at five armies, and that's if he played totally correctly after that. But Blood shouldn't have been able to do what he did. Um, so he would guarantee take that boss. Now he sacrificed 10, so he sacrificed soldiers there. That works. We're good to go now. But the question is, what is Rhythm doing? Rhythm has just tossed his presence in the game. 
They've given him his melting... Okay, so they remelted those blizzards. Remelted the lake in the desert. Okay, so we're fine. We're fine. The game's in a good spot now. For sure. I The, the game's over now, though. The game is over. Game is done and done. Glacier is the only one with a win condition. The only one I see close to win condition. Scooby should absolutely be squashing this easily. Still has his command thunderstorm in play. Yeah, it's just it's just done. Rhythm is not only taking himself out of the game, but he's forcing Scooby to use so many resources on this play to deflect him, obviously. But he's got plus two on both sides. Oh, and he just drew friendly dragon. Never mind, he doesn't even... Never mind, Lightning actually is in the driver's seat here. Friendly Dragon. I assume you have Thunderstruck. Spawn two armies here. Take it with your general. Oh. And then your other armies just keep pushing in. Then Lightning is actually in a position to win. Yep, Okay. So we've got the first application of Thunderstruck. Two free armies. He should be friendly dragoning. Oh, wow. This is actually massive. This is actually a big deal for uh, for blood. They could potentially turn this into a dragon's lair. Then they could train... Yep, friendly dragon, getting rid of this fire attack. But this fire attack was just absolutely pointless. Rhythm deserves to die here. Absolutely. Attacking lightning with command thunderstorm active. Bold. So now lightning is going to easily take this. They should also be pressing into fire because I don't actually think fire is going to be doing too much here. They're only netting 15 food. We at 31, so he could train two armies. But the problem is, is like this is a big chunk of their food. If they get this volcano, their economy's done, absolutely done. This is big, yikers! Going ahead and popping thunderclap, so he's going to get 20, 22 building materials out of this. This is Scooby's uh, entrance into tier three. I like this. Scooby is certainly in second place right now. However, I just don't think you can beat the timeline of Glacier. Because what's so unique about his positioning now is that he can choose which way to go. It doesn't matter which way he goes. He's going to be able to be successful no matter what. I imagine Glacier in this next turn maybe goes for the Rainforest, puts a Blizzard on it. Why not? Right? And then you just you can go literally to any of your three opponents. You might even be able to kill them before you get to 10 bosses. This game is just so over. All right, Scooby. Attack here. Attack here. Good boy. Good boy. One for one. That's a confident victory. Confident victory. Taking that army there. Yep, 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 yep. Get that out of here. Get that weak stuff out of here. So Friendly Dragon is what negated all the fighters' presence on that tile. But it was a pointless presence regardless. It's pointless. Absolutely pointless. Fire just threw all of their forces to the wolves to be slaughtered. Now lightning. Go, go. He didn't attack. He did attack. No take backsies. Should have attacked. Oh, he's attacking. He's attacking. Good boy. Two over two. Good. Because fire with one army will struggle to take this. Because command thunderstorms in play for one more turn. Fire's got plus three added onto the dice roll and attacking, but Lightning's got plus two, more troops defending, and two defensive fortifications. Fire's just done. They're dead. Not dead, but they should be dead. They can't do squat. All right, we should be going to Glacier's turn now. Glacier's got the force transaction card, so any resources that he was down on, he could... Oh, wait. Wait a minute. He's at 26-26. Generating 16 and 9. If he waits three turns, he's at 50-50. And that's if he does nothing. 
Why not, right? You take blizzards when you can? Take free fights when you can? Put to barracks? No, he's going the aggressive route. I like this. I like this. This is a man's win. Probably going to go for this rainforest. Spawning an army on the desert. Going for the star tile. This I don't like this play, though, because you can't blizzard it. You don't get to actually claim it. You got to go for the rainforest. So I think they just told him that, and he goes, oh, oopsie. Can't do that. Going to go rainforest, right? Turn this into a blizzard. He can actually do both, though. General here... Army there. Why not? Fire is forced to go one of two ways. How close is uh, Glacier to 18 tiles owned as well? The, the fact that these blizzards over here are unclaimed is absolutely massive. It looks like he's going for star tiles and or 18 tiles. But he really wants this star tile to be claimed by his general so that he can turn into a free blizzard. Absolutely. This is uh, beginning to be the textbook Glacier game. I think he's playing this so well. Look at all the blizzards just scattered around the board, which just act like little catacombs for his troops to sit in. He should absolutely be attacking here this turn. Absolutely. And maybe splitting one army over here. One army there, one army here, so he can buy this one. Ooh. Moving through the neutral blizzard, utilizing... Oh, that's beautiful. That was nice. So he utilized the neutral blizzard to move through it. I think you should have bought it on the way through, man. Going to put two defensive fortifications there because lightning is powerful. They won't have command thunderstorm the next time you see them. Should have bought it. I'm going to go ahead and tell him. So, let's see. He's at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 tiles owned right now. With access, 11 tiles owned. So, he, I don't think he can really get to the 18. I think he'll get three star tiles well before then. So, this is a star tile, and it's very hard to take. But that being said, Lightning can spawn two more free armies. I don't really like this play either. Why not sit in the blizzard? Why not? Excommunication. Getting rid of one of the elemental abilities. Oh, he's going for 50 and 50. I think. Right? That's that's you going for 50-50? Very good advantage card. Surrendering an elemental ability you probably weren't going to use anyway. And get 10 of one resource, 5 of the other. But he's actually using it to buy tiles. So maybe he is going for 18-18. Ah, but no, no, no. Next turn, if he doesn't... He's going for all four star tiles. Okay. So he's opening... He's expanding his options here. He's going to take this. Fire and Lightning have to actually join forces here to stop this. Is what they have to do. So he can't own this this turn, but next turn he'll be able to buy both of these. Now, Blood can stop it here. He can always get this one, but he already owns one, and if he maintains his position here, he'll have two, and he can just buy this third, and he wins the game. Right? I think a little bit of mismanagement of some blizzards here, but all in all pretty good. At plus 20 to a battle where you're defending a star tile... So it does make it to where this is not a guarantee. He should have used that card. Why didn't you use it? Oh, it wasn't an own star tile. But that's not what the card says. Could have used it. Turning this one into a volcano as well. Interesting. That was a field, if I'm not mistaken, right? You cut off your food production? On a nation that needs food. Baffling plays here from several of the players. Truly. Truly, truly. Getting good and hydrated, ladies and gentlemen. The game is over. I don't see how any other player wins this game except for Glacier. And I think Glacier even messed up this last turn. 
Why not just take both these blizzards? I am confused by that. You've got the potential for a barracks here next turn. Whichever side is weaker, you can just send your forces that way. And maybe he does still anticipate doing that. Because he can barracks here, army into this blizzard, buy it, barracks here, army, and he can actually attack both ways. So if lightning commits this direction, then lightning is dead, actually. That might be his play. That's a solid play. Very solid. But let's not delay this. Let's not delay this. What is Fire doing here? Fire's defending the volcano with this general. Trained a soldier. But now, what are they telling Fire? Because you know they're telling Fire, you have to kill Glacier here. You have to fight him here. Because Glacier's about to win the game. They're telling him to do that. But Lightning will just take his tile afterwards. Like, it's just, it's so rough for him. But Fire, you, you took yourself out of the game the moment that you went over there. Force Hospitality. Lightning can't attack Fire this turn. Can't attack those units this turn. So I think he thinks this is giving him an out. But it's actually not. It's actually not giving him an out. So we'll see how that plays out. Lightning can still attack his tiles the next turn. Yikes. So, I mean, you, you might be just using this advantage card as a meme. But, okay, let's see what Fire's last tier 2 is. He's used all of his tier 2s now. He's got plus 5 on his aggressive dice roll. Does Glacier have powerful defensive cards? They don't. Come on. I mean, he's going for the 3-star tile victory. But I think he is going to lose his soldiers here. The fact that this tile is still neutral is devastating. Absolutely devastating. So now, based on this attack, because I, I imagine fire is going to attack here. I imagine. Lightning should probably just pounce on this opportunity. Put two armies here, go for fire. Then you can very cheekily maybe get this boss over here within a couple of turns. He's rolling a 1. It's actually a 6, which means for his army it's an 8. That's a big deal. It is an 8. So he's attacking with a 40. Fire lost the fight! Oh my... So now lightning has lightning has a really really difficult turn. Lightning has a really difficult turn. But yeah, rhythm's out of this game, I think. It, it just ah, unfortunate roll, roll to one there. Glacier was at a 6-8 on his dice roll as well with his soldiers, I believe, is what I saw over there. So what does Blood do? Teleporting to the... Teleporting there. Did he purchase back Egg Sanguine? I don't think he did. He purchased back Egg Sanguine? I didn't see him actually purchase that back. Okay. Okay. So they're, they're trying to eliminate Glacier's presence on that star tile. I just, I don't think it matters. Because now, Lightning has to attack here in this next turn. But what I think is going to happen is that if he doesn't, or if Glacier somehow wins this, which he could very well, then they just buy these two star tiles and wins the game. Oof has to put this soldier here.
Ha! We're at a very... I mean, it's just... The only part of this turn that matters is if Oof puts this soldier here. Only part of the turn that matters. Then the question is, does Lightning commit their Thunderstruck here to fight fire? Or do they commit it to fighting Glacier here? They've already lost their Command Thunderstorm. But if he's able to go Tier 3, which he won't be able to. He won't. He wouldn't have Coulomb's Law. Give Blue Shadow the dub! These boss tiles have dictated this entire game, though, and I really, really like that aspect of this game. I really like it. It's I, I think three out of the four players base their strategy on bosses. I think Blue Shadow can very easily... I mean, his general can just dissect Fire's board here. He can actually buy this tile and this tile, turn them both into blizzards. Oh, that'd be wild. Could absolutely trap fire inside his base. And then he could just stockpile soldiers over the next few turns and then take Typhon. I, I, I don't think Oof has made any plays yet. What are his plays? He's got the same advantage cards he's had this whole time. Don't think he even drew. What is he doing? I'm giving him a sand timer. Dropping it. <laughs> Putting the pressure on him. I don't think he's done anything yet. He put a barracks there. Once again, only one aspect of Oof's turn matters. I don't care about what he does over here. He's not winning this fight. Wait, he just ended his turn. Game's over. The game is over. Game is done. Actually, Lightning can stall both these star tiles, actually. Wow. Making a comeback, player with the least amount of tiles owned receives 10 food, 10 building materials. Which I think this has got to go to fire, right? Got to go to fire. But it doesn't matter because I don't think fire is going to get to take their turn. I think Glacier is going to win. Glacier sitting at 26 and 19. Three turns away from winning if he does nothing in terms of BM. But he's at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 tiles owned. 13 tiles owned. 14, 15 is what he can get here. Takes this, that's 16. Buys this 17 or takes that 17. He can get to 18 tiles owned this turn or he can go to th three star tiles owned. Glacier's got multiple options. But if he loses both of these to Lightning, that's the... That's where this game is dragged out. But I think what Blue Shadow should do now is just realize, okay, if I don't get to take three star tiles this turn, I just end my turn. Three tiles from now, I, I, the game is over. There is nothing that could interfere with this. So I don't actually think he did the bribing the weatherman card, which is one of my favorite new cards we've added to the game. You get to look at five, the next five weather events. And you get to put two of them on top. The rest of them are discarded. So it looks like he's going to Cold Glacier from this side of the start tile. Yeah, he, he is putting a lot of troops here. Imagine if Glacier goes into this blizzard last turn. He doesn't use excommunication. And he has access to the frigid ability. So what he does is he would buy that blizzard, make it to where none of these troops could go into it and purchase it, and then he's fine, and then he wins the game. One food for every soldier that you own, but this is done before he gets all these. So he should be 13 food less. So he's at, still, 21 food given to him. Pretty massive. 
Food for days. Absolutely food for days. But the question at this point is Lightning's at half of a win condition, which is the closest that anyone can say to a win condition right now. Aside from Glacier, who already has his one, a confident one, and is on the cusp of two and winning the game. But, like, he has to do something else. So he spawned an army here, used 15 of that food here. Is he going to invest his whole turn to culling Glacier from Star Tiles? Does he see the potential for the play here? That's the question. Because, I, I mean, you have to. You have to kill the Lightning General here. Or the Glacier General. And then you have to fight them here. Lightning's play is... Gosh, I don't know. They just they don't have enough turns. They don't. They're out of the game. They're out of the game. They don't have the turns. But Blue Shadow could have wrapped this up in a number of ways. He, he blundered the turn that he went for this. He showed his hand too early. If he popped Frigid, he could have made it to where... Wow, he's rolling a 1. He's not Tier 3. I think Glacier rolled a 2. Lightning should take that easily, though. Well, with the Blizzard's owned... It's really a 4, which is a 6. It's a 60, 80, 85 defense. Eighty-five defense and lightning is working with a eighty. With general. Oh, that was the general's role was the first one. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, they do take it. Yeah, Lightning just... Glacier showed their hand way too early. You just stall a turn, and I think you can take the Star Tiles without them being able to do anything. I think. So, can a Blizzard actually win this turn? I don't think so. I do not think so. What I do think they can do is they just, they press in turn. Or they get cheeky over here, spawn an army, take this blizzard, and then just put pressure on lightning. Lightning already can't do much. They have to go for a kill on fire and typhon in order to win this game. There's no other boss tile accessible for them. Wow. But I don't think... He can't beat these. These forces are too powerful. That is a crazy draw, though. So the moment that Lightning moves his units off of these next turn, the game will be over. Because Lightning has to go for a play here. They have to. They have to go for Typhon while simultaneously moving towards Fire. Fire can't stop them. Wow, what is he getting back? He's buying back Winter Storm on the move. The Tier 3 ability, very good play. Yes, 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 yes. Can't use it this turn. He's guaranteeing a victory, though. He's guaranteeing a victory. The game is over next turn. I don't think there's a thing that any player can do. He has to have enough resources to buy these tiles, though. General buys this this turn, or Army buys this this turn. I think that's fine. Army buys it. Yep, yep, yep. Yes. Yes. Buy it. Yep. Goes to 9 and 1 with that. Man is saying check Discord. The game is done. What's cool about this next play is Blue Shadow can get really, really cheeky with it. 
Because Blood has to simultaneously attack both these tiles this turn. Lightning has to... Lightning has to win this turn to win the game. And he can't. The game is done. Fire needs to just end their turn. Blood needs to just end their turn. They, they can't do anything. The game is over. Oh, man. So you got Fire drawing the You Thought Advantage card. Doesn't do anything here. Because they stand zero chance against Lightning. Blood is also just irrelevant. Lightning simply has too much meat for Blood's general to do anything here. Blood's at 10 soldiers sacrificed. So he's at 30 plus dice roll, but you've got three and four armies apiece? Not a chance. What is Lightning doing here? But yeah, it's the moment that the moment that these are, are, it doesn't matter. Any blizzard, this tile has to be lost. These two tiles have to be lost. This tile has to be lost. Glacier has to lose four separate tiles to lose the game. And I think Blue Shadow has like managed these last couple turns pretty badly, pretty poorly. He's still going to win though. A good win. Oh my, wait. Fire, what can you do? I'm giving this man a timer. I'm giving him a timer. Cards are being played. Self-trading. What are we trading here? We're trading BM for food. What does this do, though? This allows us to buy three soldiers. Then what? We're attacking Glacier? I just, I don't see it. I don't see it. We're rolling. We have plus five added onto our dice roll, but only four soldiers here. Let's see it. Glacier sitting at plus two on the dice roll with these two blizzards owned and a natural defense of 15. That is a minimum defense of 18. A maximum. Of 23. Fire! <laughs> I think he loses it. He rolls a 1 though. Fire does take it. <laughs> That's rough. Yeah, so Glacier's at a 18, at an 18. Fire's at a 24. Fire takes this lake easy. He is pinging the GG. It doesn't matter, though. This is not the tile that matters. The only turn that matters is can Lightning win in one turn? They can't. They absolutely cannot. We're cruising into the sunset. We're cruising into the good night. This is going to be a cool play, though. Buying the army here. Chucking the blizzard. Chucking this blizzard, rather. One, two, three. Yep. Chucking this blizzard. Buying an army here and then snowshoesing into it. Very cool. At least that should be the play. Blue Shadow has not done what I thought he would a couple times. Yeah, so Oof has a very tall task on his hands. No way he's at 2 and 3. Not a chance. Should be at 20 and 13, though. It can't do much with it. He has to take this tile, this tile, and this tile all in one turn. Cannot be done. Not with 20 and 13. And his general over here.
Oh, actually, he won't be at 2013 because he actually should be. Barracks on the desert. Turn it black. So blood shuts down that barracks for this turn. Yeah, everyone is throwing all they can at Glacier. And I it just... It doesn't matter! End your turn, blood! End it! You won't get enough troops here. You just... You can't! The game is over! Ugh! I'm giving him the timer. I'm giving it to him. You gotta make your move. You had 20 minutes to plan your turn. Make your move. The game's been done for the last 30 minutes. He's training an army at his capital. Training an army at the landmark. Ooh. Oh, he ended his turn. Blood just genuinely did nothing. The weather event is Sandstorm. I don't think that changes a thing. The question is, what does Lightning do? They're going for Typhon. But he can't get to Typhon. Ooflord has put on a blindfold. Scooby says, I win. Don't timer me. He's getting timered. He doesn't win. Wait a minute. Oh, he, he can look at his advantage cards. He used gain intel. Right? That's the card he used. Where is it, though? Yeah, he used gain intel to look at Glacier's advantage cards. He doesn't have any other way of interacting with him, though. No, the game's done. Can't do anything. For a game that is already won. Now what? Buys it. Train soldiers attacks this star tile. Okay. Not doing at all what I thought he would, though. I'll give him that. The thing is, is once Lightning loses these troops, he has... So he's getting a Lightning Rod. Lightning Rodded, right? Yeah, Lightning Rodded. Yep. So two armies from the field came with him to his general. So they can then attack. That's a really good play. Gets him off of this star tile. Glacier is always going to be able to get this one. But the question is... Ooh, no, no, no. I still see an opening for Glacier. Absolutely still see an opening. But the thing is... Is if Justin just ended his turn twice, he's it's over. They can't stop him. They had no building material tiles to take. People are just chucking pieces across the board. I think they can all sense it in the air. The game is over. I like this play from Lightning. It's definitely the survival play. There's just one little problem. 
And it's that, where's your other win condition? They're going to try to kill fire? I think he has to. He has to attack here, right? Lightning is actually in it now. I think Glacier lost their timing window to just end their turn. Because Lightning is going to attack here. They need to attack here. So I, I think Lightning has to go here. And if they use all their forces, Glacier wins. He's at 25-14. He just needs to Blizzard on the move. Yo! This is a good play! Is he not doing it? Did he lose? He is only tier 2, right? So he didn't have Coulomb's Law active. What is going on? So, wow, Lightning lost this fight here. He lost the fight here. I don't think it mattered. Yeah, there you go. Good boy. Army by going for 10 army plus 3 Sartile. He didn't have 10 armies, though. Oh, there's one over here. Wow. Yeah, so he blizzards on the move. The cool thing here, though, is he has the Interstellar card. He has Interstellar, so he can teleport any units on the board to that one star tile. If he can just get them together, which he could easily do. And then he fights. Game is over. Just like we've been saying for the last 45 minutes, the game has been done. Yikes, man. Justin is winning with two boss kills and three star tiles. Lightning very close. Very close. So Lightning gets a win condition there. Fire and Blood both leaving this table. No win conditions. You just you teleport. You teleport. Interstellar. Interstellar. You just you teleport. Is he styling? What is he doing? Okay. Attacking there. Lightning has no defensive advantage cards, right? Yep, nothing. The game is over! What a match, ladies and gentlemen! I think it was... The prophecy was foretold a long time ago. Glacier Dub. What a... A win, ladies and gentlemen, and that's how we kick off Season 1 of Empires of Aether. Great stuff, great stuff, great stuff. Let's take a look at our scoreboard here in just a moment. Let me show you what we got cooking. Really good games. But like I said, I'm pretty sure... That Blue Shadow did his best to make that game close. Like, why? He really did. Pretty nutty. So, in that game, Blue Shadow wins via three star tiles and two boss kills on the Glacier Nation. Which has been a very, very strong element for a bit now. Ever since we decreased the prices of those soldiers in the Tier 1. But I think Glacier was in the commanding position from Turn 3. And he should have probably won turn six. The game, the turns really should have been no contest to them. But Blue Shadow didn't do his turns optimally, which gave Lightning actually a pretty good window 
of taking that win, which that would have been an absolute steal if he pulled it off. An absolute steal, because I'm pretty sure Lightning took himself out of the game turn two. Big mistakes turn two. Big mistakes from the Blood player and the Fire player as well. Blue Shadow. Blue Shadow made some good plays in the early game. Great plays in the early game. I like it. But it wasn't completely efficient. Let's not say that he walked away with just a snowball win. Pun right there. Very intentional. A snowball win when it should have been a snowball win if he played a couple of turns just slightly differently. Yikes! Yikes! Season 1 off to a fiery start, though. I really like what we're doing here. And I hope, I hope, I hope that more people get involved. What's up, Ninja Creeper? Hold on, I got my jug here. I totally didn't misplay that entire game. Flawless game, ooh, flawless game. So we are one game into Season 1. A fiery win from Glacier. Blue Shadowed. The one with the most experience at the table, yes, by a large margin, but mistakes on all sides. And I hope when this game gets posted to YouTube that you guys see that. All four players made some pretty crucial mistakes. I think turn three, based on what other players did, Blue Shadow won the game. But it should have been, it should have been over, like turn five. Last time was attorney. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And also, there's a lot of new aspects of the game. Those boss tiles, I loved that the entire game of every player revolved around the new boss tiles. That was super cool. My ability to misread cards never fails. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Dude, that was a very, very cool play from Blue Shadow. Going to Tier 3 on Turn 4 as Glacier, no less. Busy with homework today? Hey, man, we got time for games later this week. Let's run it. Let's run it, baby. All right, boys, thanks for hanging out tonight. I'm going to get this game uploaded as soon as possible to YouTube. If you are liking what is going on with this game, the next great adventure in the tabletop setting where you can trash talk your friends. But only if you win. <laughs> and there's only one winner. <laughs> But what I'm trying to say here is tell your friends because it's pretty cool to get more people involved because it's really cool what we're doing here. And the game is improving every single time we play it. Absolutely. I love it. Thanks for hanging out on this lovely President's Day. And we'll see you tomorrow probably. I think tomorrow. I think I'm streaming tomorrow. Maybe Aether. Maybe a little more Walking Dead. Whatever it is. I'll see you then. Okay? Love you.